He's now senior editor at Inside Washington Publishers, and he uh, helps us keep tabs at Popbox on what's going on in Congress. So, Charlie, what's going on in Congress? Hi, Marcy. It's great to be here with you. Um, Congress has been out on recess for the past week, as you know, hearing from their constituents and traveling the world in some cases. But they're back and are diving back into a number of controversial issues. The Senate comes back to, to take up the Marketplace Fairness Act, and they're going to go to a final vote on that on Monday evening. And this bill allows allows basically states to assess a sales tax on internet purchases that their residents make. So if you buy something over the web and it comes in right now, the odds are you're probably not paying a sales tax on that. This would set up an entire mechanism for assessing those taxes and figuring it out. In some ways, it creates a, a more simplified state tax system for applying those taxes, but it, it's fairly controversial. It has, um, it has support from both parties, from Republicans and Democrats alike, uh, particularly from some Republican governors who are very anxious to get this extra revenue. But a number of, um, even some Democrats are opposed, Democrats from states that do not have state sales taxes, such as Montana and Oregon, they're very, very hostile to this piece of legislation. And they're joined in that hostility by some of the big conservative groups like the Heritage Foundation and uh, Grover Norquist, the head of Americans for Tax Reform, who sent a rather scathing three-page letter to Mike Enzi, the senator from Wyoming, who's the chief Republican sponsor of this, raising three pages worth of questions about the legislation and possible unintended consequences for it. But all of that said, it's coming up for a final vote on Monday evening in the Senate when they return from recess. It is um, S743 if you want to use the PopVox tool to go in and tell your senator how you want them to vote on it. And, and just, it looks uh, like it's going to pass. Just for an update on PopVox, it looks like right now it's running about 6% of people who weighed in uh, support it. And 94% are opposed. So, uh, so that's the way things have been shaking down there. I just posted the link to the report. So, from marketplace fairness to to what else is going on, Charlie? Well, the next bill the Senate is going to go to is called the Water Resources Development Act, or WERDA in Washington speak. And this is, in many ways, an, a non-controversial bill. It has a lot of money for state water projects, for, you know, um, clean water projects, for, for river projects and all of that. And that's, that's a fairly nonpartisan issue. Members of both parties want this. But there are a lot of issues within that that get complicated. The level of spending is something that, that makes some conservatives unhappy. And this bill that, that's coming forward in the Senate, it's coming out of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, which is chaired by California Senator Barbara Boxer. And she's generally regarded as a friend of the environmental communi community, a very pro-environmentalist senator. She has included provisions in this bill that will, in a way, short circuit the review process for some of these projects. Now, her reasoning is that out in California, there are a number of, of water projects that have gotten tangled up in the environmental review system and all of that, and they can't go forward. She and a lot of the state legislators in California want to get these projects moving, get people hired, and get these systems built or repaired. The environmental community is pretty upset about this, actually. And e even if not particularly for the purposes of this bill, they're very worried that this this shortcut through the review process is something that could be repeated in other bills or in other environmental programs. So everybody in D.C. is always very, very concerned about the precedential nature of whatever you do. So if she puts a, a shortcut into this water resources bill, environmentalists are terrified that it, it will be applied somewhere else with grave impacts to the environment. Um, the business side says hooray to Barbara Boxer, which is pretty rare. They don't say that a lot. And they're saying, come on, let's get these projects going. But at any rate, they will have the first procedural vote on this on Monday evening, and it's expected to advance. And we're also waiting to see that legislation, the final version of it, had not been filed by the end of the week, and that will be S-601. So people, again, will be able to go on to PopVox and tell their senators how they want them to, to vote on S-601 when it reaches the floor next week. 
Great. Thank you, Charlie. And what about the house? The house, come back, come, house comes back this week as well? The house is coming back, and they are going to immediately take up, uh, well, in a little bit later in the week, they're going to take up H.R. 807, which is the Full Faith and Credit Act. The purpose of this bill is to avoid a, a major financial crisis later this summer when the, the debt ceiling is reached, the federal borrowing limit. They passed the bill, you may remember, earlier in the year that basically suspended the debt ceiling for a number of months. That expires on May 19th. At that point, the law of the United States says that the government cannot borrow over a certain amount of money. Now, the way it works in the real world is the Treasury has a lot of maneuvers, extraordinary measures, they call it, in which they can move things around in different accounts. They can pay things a little bit later here or there so the government doesn't default on its loans, on its outstanding debts. Um, they can do that probably through September or October. This Republican bill would stretch that out until November. So in a way, it's designed to take the pressure off of the debt ceiling issue. However, the way that the House Republicans are doing this is, is in, a, in a manner that is very opposed by the Obama administration, which does not like this bill and probably congressional Democrats are going to oppose it as well. What the House Republicans are doing is saying that the federal government, the Treasury, can prioritize who it pays once the debt ceiling is reached. The other side of that coin is that certain programs perhaps would not be paid. Um, Republicans say they recognize that the United States has to pay off bondholders to maintain the, the full and good credit of the United States. They want to make sure defense spending is protected. But the administration says if you do, if, if this bill were enacted into law, we wouldn't be able to pay for some of our government programs and things might have to shut down. So there's going to be quite a bit of controversy over this. I expect fully to see a White House veto threat when it comes up. And I would really doubt that this bill would get much traction over on the Senate side where the Democrats are in control. So you might want to look at this as more of a, an opening gambit in the broader debate over the debt ceiling and the federal budget as that gets started. And it's certainly not something that will go away quickly. No. <laughs> uh, and, and as for the committees on the House side, is there anything in, uh, on the agenda that we should be watching? Absolutely. There's a biggie starting on the Senate side. On May 9th, the Senate Judiciary Committee begins marking up S-744. S-744, which is the Comprehensive Immigration Reform Bill. This is going to be a debate that people are going to hear about throughout the summer and probably into next fall. It, it's a big one. This bill is based on a bipartisan compromise that a so-called gang of eight senators, four Republicans, four Democrats, put together. It includes a pathway to citizenship for people, undocumented workers who are in the country right now. That's very controversial. It includes a, a guest worker program that would allow seasonal hiring and would allow businesses to expand the number of, of temporary workers who are in the country. That, that's something that had been very, very opposed by labor unions for years. And the labor unions and the big business community actually struck a compromise on this. And that really cleared the way for this legislation to move forward. It looks like it has a lot of bipartisan support in the Senate. It's going to be a very different process in the House, and we're waiting for some hearings to begin over the course of May in the, in the House Judiciary Committee, where they're going to take a very different approach. They are looking at things like the guest worker program. The House Republicans are in favor of that, and I think they'll probably support that labor big business compromise. But they're also very intent on any immigration bill being more enforcement oriented and more border security oriented. And there really is not a whole lot of support among House Republicans for providing a path to citizenship for people who are here illegally right now, for people who did not come into the country through proper channels and methods. So what supporters of immigration reform are hoping to see, Marcy, is a very big vote in the Senate, a very large bipartisan majority in the Senate for that kind of comprehensive reform, which they hope will put pressure on the House Republicans to act later in the year. Great. The, the um, oh, can you hear me? 
Yes. Oh, great. It had to be muted for a minute. The the number again on that bill is S44, S744, and I've right. just put up a link to the report. Uh, it's it's kind of gone back and forth on Popbox. We it's it's stuck pretty close to 50/50 uh, there for a couple of days. About 1,200 people have weighed in, uh, and now it's it's at 40% support, 60% opposed, uh, and we expect to see a lot of activity on this bill over the coming months. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, Charlie. Uh, we'll be back with you next week and even take maybe a few questions from our users. Great. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. Have a good